In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another Pointless Automotive Podcast. Welcome back to another Pointless Automotive Podcast. Frank and Chadwick with you again, as we always are. Another week. Back at you. I'd say another week, another dollar, but purely yeah. volunteer work at this point. Yeah, we should. I don't know. We're coming up on a whole new year. Maybe, maybe we can, maybe mm. we can get someone to, to give us. Maybe we do the Patreon thing and like demand like forty two cents, or, or or something from from people to get nothing in return, nothing nothing of value, anyways. I mean um, that that theory that argument tracks, which is kind of similar to our topic today. Focus yes. on. Also tracks and mm-hmm. dude, I we ha- I don't know how we haven't done this one yet either. Uh, I want to call this one Frank. I want to call it "Take It to the Track Day." Taking it to the streets or <laughs> tracks? Oh, not the streets, not the streets. Take it to the side <laughs> show. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Was that Michael McDonald? No, I don't remember who did "Take It Take It to the Streets." Mm, that might have been. Take it to the streets. Well, if it was the Doobies, I don't know. Anyways, it could be uh, smoking the Doobies. Uh, but this episode, my friend, is mm-hmm. focused on track enthusiast application of our cars somewhere other than the streets where we're born, where we're from. Uh, never stopped being from the streets myself. But nope. I want to nope. talk about track Too stuff, mean. man. And you know, this is kind of funny because I haven't. I haven't been on track for a very long time. I think the last time I was on a track was 2019 and it was a low capacity event, but Frank, you're like a track day virgin. Oh, I uh, am. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Eventually I need to, um, I thought get, I uh, get deflowered. It's not the right term. I don't know what it is for when you're like, you go on the, on, on track for the first no, time. It's that it's totally that it is. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, we need to make that happen. I know we I feel like we talked about like, hey, we should we should do a track day, like actually record ourselves like you can be the you can be the the, the master and I can be the young Padawan or whatever. Um and you can show me your, your you can dust shake the dust off and, and take the cobwebs from from various crevices of yours. Um and, yeah, so and you can show me the way. And since since we haven't done that, maybe I, I suppose we're gonna do it, you know, virtually and 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 just pretend like we're doing it today, you know. <laughs> no, we should definitely still follow through with the world, the real world version. But mm-hmm. you know, my background, I like haven't done track stuff in so long. But uh, autocross and rally cross is what I used to do uh, back in the day. Are you getting assailed by some like? No, spirits? I'm looking back there. <laughs> oh, I'm, first off, I yes, I am always I'm always being I'm always being <laughs> deeply bothered by apparitions in my garage. <laughs> that aside, Actually, I was looking. I have a helmet back here somewhere. Yeah, I actually have my I bought myself a helmet like I'm ready to go. I've got one over there like I know on. that's an E uh, it's on top of a three series service manual for the E46 and a Nissan Sentra NX 1600 technical manual but yeah. um, good reading. But yeah, no, back in the ground, uh, back in the day, autocross, rallycross was where I cut my teeth and like racing. Mm-hmm. It's very affordable, very approachable. Uh, you can take like your daily. We used to build like shitty cars for rallycross, just four wheel drive and dirt tires and have some fun. Mostly winter oh, yeah. tires is what we put on them. And then I got into spec Miata for a little bit, which is a little more intense, pretty serious racing stuff, wheel to wheel. And then I went through like a track rat phase where I'd take like various street cars, drive my friends' cars, go with a group of friends. And we were doing that quite a bit for a while. So it's Hell been yes. a bit but like that's my background like so i've had some some pretty good experience there but it's been a while i'm getting crusty and rusty and uh yeah not just that but in reality i'm just crusty and rusty too this is true uh, yes i, I want to get out there hole. i want to take you out there frank like i think i think we will have a blast and like honestly i say this like we've all done spirited driving we go on the rallies where we kind of do some spirited driving we go on some back roads do a little spirited driving but there's nothing there's absolutely nothing like a track that you just I don't know. It's just being around completely like-minded people. Everybody on the track's doing the same thing. You're pushing yep. yourself. The track is made for your car to be pushed. They're very challenging uh, and they're purpose-built. And the car you bring to the track should be purpose-built too. And I think that would be part of our conversation today as we talk about, like, how do you get to the track? Like, what do you need to do to have a car that can go to the track? And that's a fun conversation. Well, okay. So let, let's let's go through it, right? Like, I, yeah. I you can tell me like uh, m- maybe I have some ideas and you can tell me that idea is, is great or, or just profoundly stupid, maybe both. Probably. Both. Um, and, and just like, how, how would I go navigate this? So, okay. Step one, 
Um, I know there are different there's there's different organizations in, in how to get involved, right? Whether mm-hmm. it's SCCA or there's different like track open track events that like is rarely put on by the track, but usually it'll be put on by some sort of group. They do like a group buy. And I, I want to say there's one here in the Bay Area, like Speed SF, I think is one of them. Um like is that is that the way to do it? Like if I, I want to if I go, mm-hmm. hey, like I want to go to Thunder Hill or I want to go to it, I almost called it Infinian. I think it's just Sonoma today. Yeah. I want to go to Sonoma, no. right? Like or I want to go to Button Willow. Like how do I Laguna Seca, maybe? Sure. Yeah. If I want to get my, my Laguna track. on. Yeah. Like That's how cool. do I how do I make that happen? Like, do I just like do I just go to the track's website and they'll be like, oh, there's this open track day put on by this organization and i reach out to that organization is like that's that the 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 slickest way to do that yeah probably the best bet and like if you have not had any track time i would advise maybe not get with scca and start doing sanctioned events or anything silly like that but i would go uh i i used to run with this team i don't even know if they're around hooked on driving and Mm -hmm. you also do your do your homework guys because not every organization runs a track day as smooth i've been to track days where you just have huge amounts of time blocks of time between your sessions sessions are short they're mismanaged there's like the track the car numbers on track are off but i've been with good organizations that you get like five solid sessions or more uh and they really because you get what you pay for right Um, right so you the first step i would say find one of those organizations go pick the track you want to go to you know live out some of your gran turismo dreams uh yeah for me being an east coast guy getting to drive on laguna seca my first time i think i forgot to breathe (laughs) <laughs> the entire first two laps I was on track and it was just like a, it was like a fucking dream. Cause I've never been on that track and just in Gran Turismo and other racing games. It was just on Frank. It's just unreal. And you're like, Oh my God, I know the track, but I don't know the track. So yeah, it's um, cool. get with a group. Uh, and that's step one, right? Like even before that, there is some homework you need to do. You need to have a sure. car. You need to have well, a car yeah. you can take to the track. Right. And I think we should cover that because there's a lot of misnomers about what a good track car is. Right. Well, yeah, no, I, what I figure is, um, cause I have my, like my 924, right. It's like 110 horsepower, 115 horsepower. Mm-hmm. And I'm afraid of maybe breaking it. And so to have a good time as a novice on a track, I should probably see if I can rent a, like a, like a GT five, like a new GT 500 or a, you know, <laughs> some, something with obscene levels of power and speed. Yeah. That's it. It's power pro- just off Turo. Yeah. And, <laughs> and just because that way I'll be quote unquote competitive because sure. I'm worried about being competitive. That's um, it. With who? It doesn't matter um, if if it's about winning. Um, but in all seriousness, like for me, and, and let me, here's, here's my thought. Mm. Just probably out of all the random ass cars that I have, the one that's probably actually best equipped for a track day it's probably the S2000. Yeah. The counter to that is, out of all the cars I have, it's the one I least likely want to, to destroy. But in my mind, yeah. I feel like uh, if I'm if I'm going up my a learner's pace, right, at a newbie's pace in that car, I I I don't I don't imagine that I'm the guy that gets sees like the red mist and tries to go go absolutely whole hog junk hanging out the window i am god everyone move out over and get out of my way not that i could do that in that car anyways sure but i don't see myself like looping it or or putting it into a a k rail or anything silly so assuming i'm not going to do that which is maybe a poor assumption but it's an assumption i'm prepared to make yeah i feel like that would be a good reasonable car to take on a track day is that a, a, a fair assessment s2000 ap2 they've got some of the un, the oversteer kind of dialed out the suspension's mm-hmm. more compliant i think it's a great car uh, it's definitely a sporty car sports car so it's gonna it's mm-hmm. gonna perform well it's made for track i mean the s2000 really is kind of built to like rev high brake hard and do all that kind of stuff you don't you, what you don't want to do is take an unprepped car right you don't want to take like your 924 will break something like unless yeah. you go through suspension and brakes which is what i was going to mention is don't power doesn't matter on track guys and i'm going to tell you this and it's not just like some like expression that just old idiots from the track say it's because you're going to be leaning on your suspension your brake system your tires more than anything else it's about maintaining that speed and 
if you have like a lot of power and you have shit worn brakes or crap tires, lap number two and three after you start to go full bore are going to be exciting because those tight <laughs> corners, you're going to be, your tires will be made of butter on a frying pan and you're going to get really loose. And if you don't have consistent braking, like if your braking starts to get fade, 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 and then to the point of like non-existent, so you're going to have a very scary experience. So go over your like maintenance items first that's the first thing i want to actually say no matter what you bring brakes right. suspension tires don't cheap out make sure everything's running good fluids. and reliable. yeah of course your fluids and everything but your contact stuff's what really is going to make your track day experience did s2000 perfect modern car you maintain that well uh it's yeah. running good believe it or not you don't really it doesn't damage cars to take them to the track that's what i mean you're like be, you'll unless be running you impact things <laughs> yeah no you'll be running with a lower group uh there's designated point by uh stages so there's going to be no like unsafe passing i'm not right. saying it doesn't happen but if it's an organization that runs their track a is good and you're you're a you're not going to be drifting you're going to get black flagged if someone sees you in the beginner class <laughs> with the st thousand with your ass <laughs> hanging out they're gonna they're gonna be like sir why don't you go ahead and pull the pits and chill the fuck out yeah um, but honestly, I think, yeah, S2000, you would have a great time in that car. And you can, you'll you learn a lot about the handling dynamics of an S2000 because yep. right now you know what it's like to drive it like seven tenths. But at nine tenths, that car is going to become a different animal, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool and fun. And you're going to like – you're probably going to end up walking away loving that car knowing its sure. true potential. Like you're going to know what it really can do. So, yeah, that's a great car, man. And, yeah, and, and like part of it is – It won't get – it won't get hurt. No, I don't. And I don't think it would because it's, it's mechanically tight. It's a Honda. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. worried about that. And, and honestly, it's got rock chips and, and scuffs and, and, and imperfect paint and things like that. So like a, a random rock kicks up and, and puts a rock chip in. I don't know. I want to say I don't care, but it doesn't dude, matter. The highway is more dangerous for that. Kind Absolutely. Of stuff. There's, there's less yeah. debris on track. You're going to get like a lot of yeah. rubber stuck to the sides and you go through your brakes and tires and accelerated pace, but that's, that's really it. You know, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It's if it's, it's it's not like I would be commuting into the next day anyway. So it's not getting, mm -hmm. you know, if I if it only sees the track twice ever, or let's say let's say twice in a year, but it otherwise isn't get getting driven. Like okay, well, it's getting its years worth of commute brakes and tire use in the two track days, um, <laughs> to to kind of keep them fresh. And honestly, like you won't go through your consumables as much. Like now, if you're doing like racing, yes, you, you start to eat those things, but you're not going to be at that level. Uh, no. You'll still be like at an eight or nine tenths, but it, it it's going to impress you what that car can do. And you're going to like, you're going to find out some cool stuff about it. What's like the new, what's the, what's the typical like newbie mistake? Like showing up there and like putting your helmet on sideways or like showing <laughs> up and like, just like trying to eat a hot dog on your first lap. Like, like what's a, What's like, are there typical newbie stuff? And, and, and cause I, I, I feel like I, I can, I can speak the language enough to not feel overly intimidated, at least by the people there, but maybe by the yeah. experience. Um, I Dude. don't know. Like what, what's, what's the, what, what's, what's the, what's the typical newbie things and pitfalls it's, that one should avoid? It's not what you think. Um, so a lot of, a lot of times you'll go and it's like a wide variety of people. The people that are running it are really cool. They, they love what they do and they want to like have people experience this. Cause it's like, it's really cool. Like, uh, you know, they try to bring up that culture where it's like positive and everybody's encouraging mm -hmm. each other. The newbies that like you will hate the most are the guys that think they're fast. Like the guy sure. with the uh, 700 horsepower Camaro. He's yeah. going to he's gonna be an absolute monster in the straightaways. He's going to not point anyone by because he thinks he's faster. And his yep. corner lines are going to be embarrassing. And he's going to have a row <laughs> of five Miatas behind him at every corner. Um, and right that's, the, that's the newbie that's like scary. So part of that is like going in... I you know, I tell everybody, it's like, don't be a hero or a jerk. It's just go in there and don't profess that you're a race car driver. Cause you, you know, if you're new to the track, just go in there and try to learn, like open your mind to like, holy shit, I didn't right. know my car was this dynamic or, you know, that corner looks completely different, you know, on a video game. Uh, but get an instructor too, cause you won't be out there by yourself first time on the no. track. Right. But get no, an instructor. Be. Cause these guys have lapped this track so many damn times. They're going to tell you the little secrets. They're going to tell you the, the corner entry points the real places to clip the apex all the little the little inside trading if you will uh and the, they're going to teach you so much and plus it's if it's included like for free absolutely take sure. it instructor right anytime yeah. i go to a new track i'm like instructor please sit there and actually they usually take your car out first to see if everything's dialed in <laughs> which is smart uh yeah. and that's that's such a sweet gig but um 
yeah, that's my advice. Get an instructor, but yeah, you just don't go, don't show up thinking, and it's not a race. Like, a, right. they're trying to budget the time so everybody can get on track and go as fast as they want and have fun, but it's not a race. There's no unsafe passing in the lower, lower like levels of they, the run groups are pretty smart. Yeah. What if, how do, how do they set it up? Is there a universal way that all any of these places set up like uh, setting out cones for breaking zones and, and apexes and stuff like that? Or is it just sometimes they do, sometimes they don't half the time there isn't. It's I don't, just, it's wild, I don't wild west. I don't look at that stuff. So uh, tracks usually have that built in, like the three, two, one countdown for a braking zone. Uh, yeah. Your car will be different. So it doesn't really, I mean, you can mentally. So your first, your first lap out, right? Usually it's a five, every like high performance driving day I've ever done is five lap sessions. The first one yep. is like getting your tires up to temp and kind of, you know, getting a feel for it. Uh, and then your second lap starting to go full board, but you'll get a feel for those braking zones and you'll remember it, you know, your car. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of stuff. It, it, it you don't even think like the first time you go on track you're just like this is so awesome and it's like it's <laughs> nothing it's like not and it's funny because you don't think it's going to be any different than like a you know a rally or a street event where you're driving like very spiritedly but it's so different dude uh you're on the track it's like a, it's a track designed for vehicles to go fast on right so i think convertible that's... do you have to have the top up or do they let you go top down Ooh, that's iffy because on the Miatas you had to have a roll bar. I think the S two thousand does the S two thousand have a roll bar? Kind of like the little like lovely lady lump humps in the back. Yeah, you have to usually go with your windows down, and that's a safety thing, so you can get out of the car in case you do something. And yeah. uh, for track days, you don't need a you don't need an actual suit. When you start racing, I still have my like fireproof level suits, and everything has to be fire retardant, which is it gets mm -hmm. expensive real quick because there can't be if you have even uh, like a pair of silk panties on, which I usually wear under my racing right. suit. Like one does, my, yeah, yeah, and it, hence why my genitals are in the state of disrepair they are. Yeah, uh, you can't Nuked. do that. But track days, dude, uh, I would recommend comfortable clothing. I uh, usually mm -hmm. want full, you don't want shorts, you want pants. Uh, you have to have shoes. I have, I, I do wear my driving shoes, which is cool to invest in a cheap pair of driving shoes, something narrow, right. easy pedal work and a, a helmet. Yep. And the helmet has to be modern and, you know, uh, safe. And that's it really. So, so my, my, my jammer helmet that I had when I was like 11 for my BMX bike, it had like the neon stickers and said jam. You remember those? The jammer oh, helmets? Oh yeah. You're good. Yeah. You're totally okay. good making sure. So I mean, that your brain, your brain fly? might not be, but you'll, you'll be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Brain bucket. Um, Usually if you have an instructor, you'll have a little radio, you get to talk to each other. Cause it's pretty loud when you're on track. So um, it's, it's like, the thing is like, it shouldn't be intimidating. And a, a lot of times they have really good driver meetings where they kind of explain the rules and it's really, it's like a good crew. If they run it tight, it's a, it's a good experience. Where, um, so I know you said you've done Laguna Seca. What other tracks have you done out here? Just Laguna Seca? So I've done Sonoma. I only did Sonoma once. I did Thunder Hill once. I've done Laguna Seca probably a hundred plus times. I've okay. done uh, on the East Coast. I did VIR, uh, Summit, and some other ones out there. But uh, yeah, out here, I'm trying to think of the... Oh, I haven't done Willow Springs yet down in mm, near okay. LA. So I, I would yeah. like to do that. Streets of Willow and then Horse, I've heard Horse that's a good Beef Mile is supposed to be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, I, I'd love to get back to Sonoma. Thunder Hill's a riot. That's an interesting track. I've heard Thunder Hill's cool. And it's like, I've seen events that are like, my understanding is Thunder Hill is cheap. Like if you wanted to rent out the whole track, it like cheaper. it's, it's yeah. cheap. It's in the middle of, middle of bumfuck, but. Laguna um, Seca is still my favorite. Not just, and that's, it's not because I've raced there the most. It's because I want to race there the most. I fucking, that track has yeah. something for everything. Your S2000 would be absolutely brilliant there. You know? Yeah. And what's the, um. What's the other? There's another other track, Chuckwalla. That's down. Yeah, that's down in SoCal, right? Yep, yep. That's uh, you could probably do that, and that'd be quite a weekend to pack that in with uh, <laughs> yes. Willow Springs. But you could do it. Um, but so, yeah, I've I've been on quite a few different tracks, and every one of them is different, which is cool. What's the worst? VIR is scary. It's like because uh, it's yeah. such to me, it's high speed stuff, like. I, not that I'm scared, scared. It's just like when you fuck up at that speed, it's a, it's a bigger <laughs> fuck up. The magnitude of yeah. how fucked you get is higher. 
Um, but I like more technical stuff personally. So, uh, but I don't know. That's why I come back to Laguna Seca because it does have some high speed stuff. That turn one, when you, when you were going 110 under the start mm-hmm. line and then you don't see the world because it drops and does that little left-hand turn, you look for one of the telephone poles in the distance. That's how you line up that drop. Got and then it. there's a double apex or single apex at the bottom. So you got to get on the brakes downhill, but it's just so, it's such an uneasy feel, but I love it. And then the corkscrew, you barely <laughs> notice. And then there's a lot of like really good, like it rewards power. Your S2000, I love it because there's a lot of like places where you rev out completely. Um, I, I think you'll get a kick out of it. It's iconic. You know, that's what, that's a world famous track. What would you take if you were going on a track day tomorrow? Do you go NX2000? You know, I don't really have anything sorted right now. And yeah, the NX2000, I guess, is probably going to be it. Yeah. It'll be, yeah. it'll be slow as dog shit, but you know, the handling should be good with the, especially corner balance like it is now. Hey, at least it'll look bizarre doing it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's sorted, <laughs> dude. The suspension's very good. It's got adjustable yeah. coilover, sway bars. Everything's dialed in right now, and I have 200 treadwear tires. It probably, and it just did the brakes over, so it's probably pretty fucking competent on track, to tell yeah. you the truth. Hell yeah. The SR20 loves to rev. It'd probably be pretty good, and I don't know. I have a little, If I go to, like, Laguna Seca, where I'm really comfy, that's my comfy track. Um, yeah. I could probably put down some gnarly times in that thing. What's the, what's the fastest car you've, like, or maybe not fastest, fastest and or most powerful? That you've, so, that you've had on a, on a track day so i did uh, my buddy had an e90 m3 modified that had okay. like 500 and something horsepower and it was absolutely brutal on track like it was a monster <laughs> and then i drove uh the c7 when it launched i drove a c51 and okay it was like a supercar on a track I, that, the uh, numbers yeah, that I, car put down oof. speaking I, on, on last episode when i was saying how i I've been driving a bunch of stuff because I've been just shooting stuff. I just shot a uh, that exact car. It was a, a, a C7 Z51 package, seven speed. Um, just on the street, what a pussycat that car is to drive. Oh, it's so easy. easy fuel economy on the highway too. Yeah. It's just the everything is light and easy. It's like cheater mode. The you know, I kind of like, I like how the C7 looks compared to the C8. I'm going to say, I, do. I don't disagree with you. And this <laughs> one I drove is this really cool. It's like a blue, it's like a light blue silver. Mm-hmm. It's not Ooh. quite like a princess blue, but it's a little yeah. more silver than that. But it's a very subtle blue silver. And I was like, this might be the color, like this might be the spec because it's it it it's probably the least douchiest seeming C7 Corvette possible. God, it's I a think standard it's- one in this like kind of a feminine, it's not the right term for the color, but it's a very not douchey color. It's not very neutral. and it's not white or yeah. black. It's like it's a little bit more carefree. And I was like, this is kind of the one. Um, and not to get too bogged down in C7 talk, but man, the interior, <laughs> the interior of the C7 Much versus better. the C6 was a huge step. The way the whole cockpit is actually built around the driver. Like it blew mm-hmm. me away when I sat and I'm like, holy shit. Like this was the launch, by the way. This was the launch event for that car uh, yeah. at this track day. And we got to take one around and I was just like, this is fucking stunning. This is amazing. Yeah. Good car. Yeah. Um, something like Good that's car. a track day monster. Like if you take a, a Camaro SS one LE or something gnarly like that with Magna ride and grip yeah. tires, you're going to spank like those, those cars, like don't stand a chance. Assorted Miata. You're going to spank all day in the corners. Right. And you're going to be slow as mm-hmm. shit in the, uh, the straights, but you're going to have a blast, but S 2000 is going to be a good balance. Cause it definitely ups the power and it's got good handling chops. I think you'd have a lot of fun with that car, but that's you. I mean, that's, that's a usual Friday night for me though, is at least, at least when the, at least when the, uh, the bull is here with my wife, I'm usually just spanking it in the corner. No, good. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, I, I'm used to that. <laughs> in the corner. But what I'm, what I'm, like I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious what the, like, what would a like? I, I assume like somebody like me who's like pretty green to it, not green to cars certainly, but but green to go, being on mm-hmm. track. I would think that walking in with just like, hey, here's a C, here's a C7, yeah, prop that that like, I don't like. I see it almost impossible for me to loop the the S2000. Totally plausible that like. I can get a little overconfident in, in something like a C7 and just it, it's whoop. it's funny because everybody's like got an idea because an S2000 it's a quick car it's not really a it fast is. car um, but that yeah the C7's like your magnitudes 
higher. And of course, with that comes the ability because you get so confident. Even the brakes. That's what like, I mean. On like, a I feel C51 like I would get overconfident. And... Is, is so but it's so capable. Like it, mm-hmm. it it encourages you to push it harder. And that's when you get really comfortable on that track, you start to like push cars a lot quicker. I don't know if you ever noticed, like when we go drive in the mountains or something, I can get in yep. a car and I just fucking go a little little harder than most people think I'm gonna go. And it's just you get that that familiarity, but that Corvette is like that. It's one of those cars. And Miatas are like that for me, clearly, because I've had a lot of experience. And the yep. Mini's like that. Every time I get in the Mini, now I can't drive it like a normal human being. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yep. Mini, it's, it's mini problems. Yeah. But S2000 would be good. I, other cars you ask, like that people bring, BRZs, uh, FRSs, yeah. those kind of GT86 is very popular. Really You'll good. see the guys who like Supras and stuff. And those are good. Those are good cars um, to take to the track too. But you'll see a mix. You'll see guys who like uh, M3s. And- yeah, M3s are, of course, you're going to get your M cars. Uh, the E90 is a great platform for a track car. That's a very quick car. Um, yeah, those very are good. quick car. Yeah, and there's variants of Mustangs like the GT350s are good. The mock, the mock yeah. ones. Those kind of those kind of cars show up and kick some ass. But yeah, Porsches. You'll get some Porsches there. You don't actually see as many as you think you would. Uh, really interesting. Yeah, those are all those are all too busy going to the cars and coffees. And <laughs> right. Exactly. Com- yeah. Comparing comparing seatbelt colors. You'll get them, but then you'll go and you'll be like, "Man, I got an S2000 and I got double that Miata's horsepower." There'll be Miatas just flying by. Oh you. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, no, it's I don't. Just... I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> The, the so, platform's insane. Yeah, it's um, the platform and and just driver mods like driver mod, driver mod, driver mod, driver like, mod. Even it if, weight, it's like six hundred pounds lighter, right? Like yeah. that's on track is all their consumer rules are staying fresh longer. But like I said before, you'll get the guy, you'll get the old guy in the uh, God, the F type. I one time I went and there was a guy in an F type not given point by. Yeah. So I'm like, we get it. Your car sounds. Like fucking an orgasm of the gods. But right. boy, you cannot take a corner. Like locking the brakes, trail braking, the car's getting <laughs> loose. And I'm like, just point us by, we like to go. And I, I actually did a lot of track time with my legacy spec B, which I did like cool. a stage two upgrade. And I did like, I did stupid stuff to that that car. So I imported the, uh, they made an STI version of that car in Japan. Yep. I imported the pink STI springs with the Bilstein shocks and put all that in with all the Cusco sway bars. And that nice. car- my buddy's E90 M3, we were the same lap time. That's cool. It was That's so fun. cool. Different, did it differently though, but that car, sure. oh, that car was a blast. A little heavier, but just God damn it. It was like 300 plus wheel horsepower too. So it was like, yeah. Yeah. The, the, was a, the, yeah. That state, like, like Cobb stage two stuff was, yeah. Cause that's basically what intake, downpipe, and tune. Yeah, I had a full intake, downpipe, yeah, a custom tune, and then really grippy tires, upgraded brakes, and then all the suspension handling stuff, and it was just hilarious what that car could do, man. It was so good. Good Um, car. Missed that car. What track, what track, let's say in America, if you were get to go, like, that you haven't done? What's Mm -hmm. on on your short list? That's a tough one. Like, Road America would be cool, or like, you you know, I think that'd be a fun one. Um, road atlanta yeah, road atlanta would be still cool yeah and uh where did they uh savannah rambling a uh, rumbling rumbling road like Ro- rotor rumbling that road. still exists yeah. <laughs> i would love to do that just to, to do that because man they were hanging out these like akata boxes and they were like basically like ships in the on yeah, in, in the, the tires oh, so good what about um, um uh the uh the oval at daytona nah, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> boring in a miata <laughs> yeah I hit 90. No, but it's, I don't know, man. It's like, and I still have stuff I want to do. I want to do a, I don't know how I haven't done a Le Mans yet. Like a lemons, uh, lemons. version. I haven't yep. done any endurance racing, which I think I'd love to do because I, I wrench a lot clearly and I'd like to use those skills and my racing skills. So I think that'd be a great, I, you know, I should put like a thing out there. Hey, take me on your team. Want to. <laughs> I just, yeah, you know, I want to be out there. I want to build a lemons car too. That's kind of like one of my passions. So I want to, I want to do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I've always wanted to do that for a very long time. And let's, I've even bought a car to do it and then didn't, didn't, didn't do, do it. it. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Dude, if that's your first track day experience, that's going to be pretty, <laughs> like, be pretty you're going yeah. wheel to wheel that's budget fun. car racing. Yeah. Just ship boxes and, and, and yeah, parts we falling should, off. We should go in the spring sometime. Cause you don't want to go before it gets too hot. Cause it's like really yeah. hard on the cars. Um, and let's go some track I don't go to a lot, so I can be kind of a noob too. Yeah, that'd be fun. We go, go to Bud Willow or something. Yeah, Thunder or Hill. Sonoma. Sonoma's right up in your neck of the woods. Yeah, so. yeah. Thunder Hill's not that far too. Um, and I think they, um, I think Hooked on Driving is still doing, uh, still doing events. 
yeah great um, organization uh pretty affordable and like they really put it together you get a lunch in the middle of the day it's like it's just absolutely brilliant you know yeah we should the, do the, we should absolutely just not say we're gonna i know i got a, a baby coming in february but like maybe like <laughs> right before summer gets serious like we should sneak one in yeah it'd be fun. definitely yeah oh, nx2000 good lord <laughs> maybe yes. i'll find it i need a track car well i have a corvette zr1 if i fix that up that'd be kind of fun yeah that that would be that would be a that would be dope for a lot of reasons. Just yeah, like, it would be. It would be scary for a lot of reasons too. But with the um, would you try and run the big brakes that are on it now? Mm-mm. No, no, we're gonna do it. We're gonna die like men and run it the way it should have been. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you do a wall. Put some gator um, backs on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, good, your gator backs. <laughs> um, <laughs> Speaking of yes. Motor Week, <laughs> Motor Week. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, we should we should do something like that in in lieu of. Because, yeah, I, I know I don't have time to start a freaking Lemons team or nothing. But, no. um, yeah, we should um, we should do that. I think that would be a lot of fun. I know we talked about it before, and, and now we've got a little bit more in-depth. And now I've got some insider, inside knowledge on yeah. how to not completely show up and, like, puke on my own chest out of nervousness or, like, fight an old man or, 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 or light my car on fire or, or piss get- off the marshal. You get a legit adrenaline surge. Um, oh, I'm sure. When I you promise the, you. Yeah. After your first session, you're like, yes. And then, or your car breaks. And you're like, fuck me. Like, I've, I've done that too. I've gone to a track day and I blew like a math. Uh, what was it? My math yeah, sensor went thing. out. My buddy's BMW had like the the um, limp mode activate after our second session. So I've had days yep. like that. And it just happens, right? It happens to the best of us. Uh, even a well sorted car, but it's gonna happen. But we should do some. Uh, we should do some karting. Uh, have you ever done any like legit go? Not real karting. I've done like yeah, the what is like K one or whatever is like the indoor kart places, which yeah, it's are still pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's but it's not like shifter karts or nothing. No, but we could do some go karting to get the the real cobwebs loose, and then we'll we'll hit a yep. track, man. We should definitely do it because I, I think you'll get a kick out of it. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot yeah. of fun. I'm game. I think that would be good. So we should do that. Um. Any any last tips and tricks for 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 me? I, I I don't know if that I've got any questions other than like, what's this most profoundly stupidest thing you've seen on track? Oh, I've seen it all. I've seen people push. I've saw I saw an S two thousand at Laguna Seca just totally fucking back into a wall for no reason, like completely <laughs> just we're Picking just going and just I don't know what the hell he did. If he I think he was late a combination of trail breaking and like trying to cut in and let off the clutch and cause that rear end to get a little loose and it just completely went hit the sand or the dirt there and on i think it's like turn two and just kind of backed into the wall right there and it was like we aren't even it was like it was like the it was like the second lap so it wasn't ever full <laughs> hot yet i was like okay yeah. you know and you just like one it, of those totally, days all right he'd been the car it's like it was gone you know the <laughs> rear end crumpled so i'm like that, it's not worth <laughs> it that's how you lose a track day is when you wreck your car but yeah. you you know push as much as you're comfortable and i've had days where i go and they actually do you do threshold braking practice and acceleration where you do test your abs and see how it feels so you get used to that feeling that's cool Um, you you know and they do all those kind of things but just my advice would be just go there with an open mind try to learn like pretend you don't know your car because it's going to be a different thing out there and try to like learn from the instructor listen to instruction and just like try to be safe and you'll be hyper aware of what's going on and my big advice is when you get on the the streets afterwards be very aware that you went from a environment where everybody was trying to do the same thing and has <laughs> perspective vehicles. So the fucking wild West where it's bumper cars. So yeah. like, that's the thing. Cause when you take that thought, you're like on day, I've been driving on a track with fast cars all day. You get on the highway and it's like fucking it's, it's game over. So that's just funny. Yeah. You know, be, be aware of that. And they usually do that in the safety briefing. Cause it is, it's like a fucking, it's scary. <laughs> Speaking. Oh, scary. Of, things? of scary things. Let me shut my laptop. Cause should we, I'd like to play a game. You know what? We should call this game the Automotive Print Ed Quiz Game Show. We should. Yeah. Not, I think not it'll the, stick. <laughs> the Automotive Jigsaw. Um, <laughs> that yeah, we should, do, we should do that. Uh, it knows how to use them. And I'm going to pull up. Uh, what am I going to pull up and tell the people what's I happening was, as, I, I was, as I queue us up? I always picture the ZZ Top guys were born with those beards. but um, Definitely. And cheap sunglasses. So this is our automotive print ad quiz game show. Uh, this week's episode, Frank will be reading a magazine article. It is a automotive print ad. So this is a printed from a publication. Uh, 
vehicle. He's going to read through the ad, omitting anything that gives it away. My job today, my only purpose in life, let's be honest, is to guess the vehicle he's talking about. I have three guesses. Every time I fail, he can offer me a hint or not offer me a hint because sometimes he says, fuck it, I don't need a hint. But I will probably ask for hints and we will eventually figure out what the year make model is. Uh, year's kind of a bonus, but sometimes we get there. Uh, obviously, fair game, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, and 10 minutes are on the clock. Frank, let's fucking go. Let's go. I'm going to give you an option today, my friend. Oh, God. I'm going to let you choose I your destiny. Don't like bit. This. Yeah. Do you want medium or do you want extra spicy? I mean, you difficulty. crushed me with the base model Ultima last time. So I think <laughs> you got it. Little... You figured it out. Yeah. I still, that was a spicier one. Um, hmm. Fuck it. Let's go spicy. I haven't I haven't totally okay. failed in a long time. Let's do it. No, let's do it. Okay. Spicy mode. Oh god. So uh this is a one pager. Um it for some reason. So the the top half is uh the vehicle in question driving down the road. Um it's that front driver's three quarter shot that we like so much. Headlights Money. are on. It's oh. in a mist, it's in like a misty um, well, a forest. It's driving down like a misty forest road. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, it has the name of the model repeated four times in like a, a slightly undersized script at the top. I don't know why. It then has some verbiage underneath. And then it shows uh, like a, you know, a, a cut, like if there was no roof or side of the car off where you get to see the interior, the leather clad interior. Mm. Then it says, it runs in the black forest. But it's also nice to people. It has road instincts learned in the wild. Yet, unlike other German sedans, Blank also has an interior designed for the civilized. Ease into Blank's driver's seat and feel the soft, available leather gently support your back. Ask your companions how they're enjoying the power reclining rear seats and over three feet of leg room. Then, for the most comfortable feeling of all, turn the ignition and put yourself in command of Blank's 2.9 liter Autobahn bread, fuel injected V6 and standard anti-lock brakes, ABS. Blank, it's one German touring sedan that treats drivers with utmost respect, yet still treats passengers with uncommon kindness. For more information, should we call it live on the air again? We're call, definitely going to have to do that. Call 800-822-9292. German performance you can be comfortable with. Imported from Germany for select blank dealers. That's it, my friend. Was it from Germany? <laughs> yeah. How many it's times like did it say it? <laughs> Germany, Black Forest, Autobahn. <laughs> Some no tech specs, uh, 2.9 V6, yeah, but sedan, like... ABS fuel injected. Yeah, no, I want, I want zero to 55 times. I want <laughs> zero I to want... 48. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> breaking from 12 to zero. Uh, this is interesting, and this is, I, I think, sedan, you said it's a sedan, yep. Ample leg room, lots of leather, available leather. That that very last piece I read was very important, though. Yes. Well, here's the other thing. I was already thinking this because no German automaker would say built in Germany. <laughs> German, German, in Germany, German, German, five German, times, German, German, six times Nazis, even. German, German, yeah. <laughs> German. <laughs> the Reich, German, <laughs> Auschwitz, the Black <laughs> Forest, exactly. So a Did lot of it, Ger- it, was, yeah. it was purely Germanic reference, which BMW or Mercedes would be rather caught dead than including in an ad about their vehicle because we already know they're from fucking Germany. Volkswagen also. So, and then you said it was built for certain makes, so it's like a German built car, imported from Germany for select blank dealers. And then I got stupid and started thinking of like Opal, like how they got built GM stuff that got sold in the States, but I, they wouldn't be plugging Germany for any GM badged Opals or it could be it, badged Vauxhall or something. Yeah. Yeah. Something, something from that region. But I think I got it, my friend. I think I really, I, okay. I think I got this one because okay. two cars could fit this bill, but you said sedan. And I think the other one was only a coupe. If I'm, if I remember correctly, and this is a, uh, 
I think they only built two models this brand. If I'm if I'm correct, Frank, I might be wrong on Maybe. that one. I believe this one is a year is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go 1984. Mercure Scorpio. Final answer. It is a Mercure Scorpio. Okay, you are correct. Uh, it's way later. I think it's I think it's like an eighty. I think it's like maybe a nineteen ninety. Oh, 89. Shit. I don't know. It doesn't list a year. It. I think when, I. Well, I don't those... know. I honestly don't know. Let's I see. I thought those came out at the same time as the. Uh, as the one we all celebrate, the XR4Ti. Did... Uh, it was two years, eighty-eight and eighty-nine were the okay. only years. I was, that they, I was, it was a little offered. premature. Was the uh, XR4Ti that came out earlier though, right? That did. That came out. We had the XR4Ti eighty-five to eighty-nine. Okay, cool. Uh, but close. that never had the V6 in it. I think that you only got the 2.3 turbo. Right, which was the cooler engine, let's be honest. Yes. Well uh, done, sir. Yes. I mean, it's well the only like the only car that was built by Germans <laughs> and sold. Like, Captive right? import. Yeah. Had to be it. Yeah, because I, I don't... If I wasn't think... a fucking car idiot nerd, I would never have gotten that. Because the only... The, the closest thing would have been... Otherwise would have been what? Like a Cadillac Katerra? Would probably be because that was that was a that was an opal. True. Yeah. That was that was a rebadged opal. A Katera would have been luxury a little, luxury a little later in the game, right? Like yeah, for sure. Nineties, ninety six, I think was the first yeah. Katera. Nine, may, maybe earlier, maybe like ninety three. You think ninety three, ninety four? Hmm, maybe. I think. I mean, I then know. you have the weird stuff like the Alante and stuff, which is Italian, of course, but that was right. kind, of, kind of built in another country. Yeah. Did you know that? Did you know the Scorpio? Did you know the Scorpio was uh, built in uh, Germany? Did you pick up on that? Uh, I think I the heard Black Germany. Forest, even. I I literally heard Germany six times. Then. <laughs> yeah, so I knew immediately. We Autobahn talking, bread V six. We weren't talking about a German car. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well done, sir. Um, that one of those would be interesting to get a hold of. I still think I'd rather have last week's contestant with the nine two nine. If I had the daily, yes. Um, <laughs> Here's one for you. XR4TI or this? Oh, definitely the XR4TI. Same. Without yeah. a doubt. Without a doubt. I'm I'm with you on that one. These are cool though. And I feel like these are ultra rare because the XR4TI has some redeeming qualities. It has a turbo. Could the Scorpios? I'm assuming the Scorpio could also be had with a manual. I just looked. It? Yes. You can get a five okay. speed uh or four speed auto. I mean, I would totally rock one. I think the V6 is going to be more pedestrian than that two, three turbo, but Ooh, guess yeah. the sales, and then we'll call this this probably porno phone number. How many uh, how many years was it sold for? To, uh, well, they sold them as an eighty seven and eighty eight model year, but it looks okay. like they continued actually selling them in eighty nine and and ninety. <laughs> so they didn't sell their inventory. They didn't sell their inventory. Yeah. Oh, total total sold over their whole run. Um, are you doing by year? It's well. Let me do some quick mental math here. Let's yeah, let's go total. Or if you have total, I'll do total. I don't uh, have total. I'm just doing it in my head. But, okay, Scorpios, um, they sold uh 42,000 units. No. Uh kind of inverse that. It's more like 20 what is this? 15, oh. 22 almost 23. That is truly miserable. 23,000. They did 5178 and 87, 9516 and 88, and then between 89 and 90 they sold another 7316. God, and these things weren't reviewed poorly because I think the Motor Week was pretty positive. Uh, and everything I saw, period, uh, periodicals from the time, like magazines, like the car. Interesting. Yeah, it's just, um, it's, it's funny. Um, if you got the uh, um, automatic with touring package, it, the sticker price was 26405 which is the equivalent of $68,000 today. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but did maybe you that's why. Did you hear, Frank? Made in Germany. <laughs> you know what? It, it, it's Autobahn bread. Okay. Autobahn. <laughs> mm, Autobahn unfortunately, bread. That, yeah, unfortunately, there's an A in that. Yeah, B R E A D. Yeah. Um, oh, good oh, car. You know what? We got to do. Remember. Hold on. Let me call that phone number. Where did the ad go? Oh let me, God, let me here find we go. It. We can. You didn't share the see. ad either in uh, typical Frank. Oh yeah. Let me let me do that. Up let me do this, and then I will send. These were here. always these were always white. I remember that. Is the one on the ad white? Of course. Uh no, it's like silver. Oh. Yeah. Did they make a silver one? Allegedly. Huh. Um, okay, so your, let me call let me call this here. number here. 
800 822 9292. Definitely not a sex, sex line number. Definitely not. Well, it was last time we did this. I don't even remember what car that was. 800 9292. Oh. Let's see what we got here. This is a cool ad. Yeah, right? It looks like it's in the Black Forest. Talk dirty to me, big boy. See what we get. What if we get a person? What do we do? I would like to buy Scorpio. (laughs) Who has a Scorpio? I can have Scorpio. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I fear that nobody might answer. I don't know. It might be a number to Germany. (laughs) Yeah, what what is it time? I'm I'm not sure. It's uh, it's probably like 4 a.m. or something over there, right? What, it just rings now? See, I want to, I want to, I have questions about this black forest. <laughs> Three feet of legroom. I don't, that feels like a lot. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Oh. Your call can now oh, be man. That's a shame. Uh, we, oh, well. We set a high precedent last week. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the, <laughs> the last time we did it, when it was just instantly porn. Ah, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well. Maybe, um, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get lucky again. We'll get lucky, lucky next time. I think it's because no one could say Mercure. Is it at a Mercury? Is it yeah. is it a cougar? The Mercury Cougar. Is it like a shortened cougar? A Mercury yeah, what's going Mercu- on here? Mercuger. Um, have you been working on your Mercuger? What have you been doing oh. wrench wise, my friend? I do want to do some PCP. I, I do like I would totally get a Mercure Scorpio if I found one. With a manual, of course. Uh, straight but, from the Black Forest. Straight, straight up. Uh, but PCP wise, project car progress. Mm-hmm. I've been doing good things, Frank. Oh, I know last week we talked about me buying another car, and that's going that's in the right. wrong direction. It is. Listen to this. This is, I'm listening. this is straight off the press, my friend. So I'm selling cars, guys. I'm back on it. I, you know, I'm going, I'm going straight, cleaning up, getting mm-hmm. my shit together. Finally, 43 years in, I finally figured it out. Uh, the Mini is probably going to sell tomorrow. I've got a ah. job. I'm gonna buy it. He gave me a deposit, so that's usually a great sign. He's super pumped. Um, to be honest, like I, I really wasn't paying attention. I was getting so many emails about it and I was, I've been super busy and with work and everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm not playing like the back and forth game with people. They're like, Oh, I found this one for 500 or $5,000. And I'm like, cool. Sounds like a good deal. You just go buy that one. Go buy it at like 180,000. That's an extra hundred more than mine, but I'm sure it's the same. And you know, yeah. uh, blah, blah, blah. Good luck with the new clutch. Anyway, this guy's super pumped. He's like, Oh my God, it's British racing green without a sunroof. And yep. you just did all the clutch. It has 88,000 miles. Yes. 2005 and 2000, you know, the later models were the most loved R53s. Yep. He's pumped. He's like, I haven't seen one in this shape forever, you know, because it is, it's all original, uh, really good condition maintained. Uh, like I said, I overdid the car because it was going to be my daily. So he's excited. I got the Trooper going to be on cars and bids soon. That's what I hear. So that's potentially going on. And that one I'm super sad about because I really love that truck. And I, I it drove- is cool. I drove it a little bit today, man. It's such a good truck, but like I need, I, you know, this time in my life, baby on the way, I got to be realistic. Um, mm-hmm. I'll just buy another one when the time. No, nope, I can't. Yeah. They're easy. Good, just good fucking luck finding that yep. truck again. Um, anyway, that's going to be blazer update. The transmission oh. rebuilt transmission and flywheel and everything else the, <laughs> was replaced on the transmission. It's driving around nicely. So I still need to do a lot of work on that. All the fluids. Okay. The paint coming back is going to be another miracle. Hopefully, I can do it like I'll a bury it. Uh, the that fucking goddamn you know the yeah that whole headliner the ninja is, hair li- yeah gotta do it baby gotta do it Wolver- there was like two Wolverines fucking in there uh, definitely making without more consent Wolverines. without consent yeah no um, <laughs> not of the not of the Blazers anyways but it's going to be a lot of work but that's going to be awesome and the NX oh, yeah. the NX really just needs cosmetic stuff and to be dialed in and smog and all that admin stuff so I have four cars potentially going out the door in rapid succession Frank bang, four bang, bang. Ooh. I need I need to do the same. I have not I have not I, done it. I've made I've made even less progress than last week. Where God. last week I stuck a magnet like a, a sticky mirror <laughs> on the on the on the I'm waiting for this one. <laughs> Where are we going? I've just I I've not done anything. Huh. I need to I'm, I I I need to put the speedometer back together. Put it in the white car behind me. Um, figure out its current. No start, no power condition, which is disconcerting. 
Good Lord. Um, Wait, no, so no start, no crank, obviously. No, nothing. Like key in, you turn it, nothing. It's got 12 volts at the battery. It's got 12 volts at the terminals. I haven't gotten farther than that. Starter solenoid, baby. If, no, like, like th there's no power. Like you turn, like. No, but is there no power getting to the starter solenoid from the battery? Uh -huh. There's no power getting to anything. Like not I the dome light, were... like nothing. But you get like, power. No power. But you're getting power off the battery? Battery's got 12 volts. Well, you 12 point, 12 you six. Trace that red wire, buddy. Yeah. Usually yeah. the starter solenoid is the first place I start. Yeah. If you can put a screwdriver across that, Frank, and your car starts to start, that's how you know. Yeah, but like there's no, there's, yeah. There's not even, it's not like that there's not power to the starter. There's not power to the chassis. There's no power anywhere. It sounds like a Porsche 924 to me. <laughs> it sure does. So, yeah. And it's not like it's been driven. It's just from sitting here for what, the last six months. Um, so, part, so that's going to go away. I want to love those cars, but I think I would like, I, I would fall out of love quick. I think yeah, I would. I just, I need to. That's kind of why I kind of want to sell the green car because I do love it. But mm -hmm. I know it, there will be a point. It's going to be a point of diminishing returns on that car. And yeah, sure. And that's just the value in it. This is why there aren't nice ones anymore. Mm -hmm. This that's one, true. this one's only nice because it was with the original owner. Um, which is cool. Like, there's a lot to love about it. But I know something is going to. Oop! It's going to need a clutch, and it's going to cost the value of the vehicle to put a clutch in it. One hundred percent. I just. Yep. That's just a tough nut to. A tough load to take um and i'm a i'm a i'm a no loads refused kind of guy uh -huh. so i'll probably just sell that one the white one i know i've been talking about this ad nauseum but i've done i've made no no headway on it um i've just been too damn busy so and now it's supposed to start raining here in a minute and now i'll really get concerned about it so maybe i maybe i can find time to do that this weekend um i don't know i i might be a bit on an island this weekend my wife just randomly ended up getting like straight up old school influenza not affluenza that would be that would require lots of money that's a good which i don't have um yeah so it's just good old-fashioned so it's gonna probably be basically me and me and the kid on an island all weekend and then it's supposed to start raining like monday tuesday wednesday and nah, 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 and then there's christmas and there's gonna be a million excuses that i can make to not get shit done that i just need to get shit done um maybe sell this little scooter behind me over here mm. um and and load up load up on monies for for uh for christmas which just happened in your listening world that's people right. out there um <laughs> uh let alone a chanaka or hanaka or or, or kwanzaka or festivus um or is it what's there isn't there like um like a church of satan baphomet celebration or something like that there, where you I, there, I if there isn't there should be i mean there should be maybe that's what we can we turn this into some like some weird satanic uh <laughs> ritual podcast <laughs> i was hoping we'd take that turn <laughs> yeah one day you know the, 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 the I future love is Satan. wide open and we're back <laughs> exactly and we're, today's guest Balfomet. yeah um i don't know so, satan, satan is a proponent of 924 ownership <laughs> that's right exactly that's why I, I i've been i've been in the grip of satan that's why there's a portion badge and it's affordable <laughs> <laughs> what could <laughs> go wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah, I've made I've made very little very little progress there. Um, so let's change that yeah. uh, collectively. I think the more I come back to it, though, I think I am gonna sell the Galant. I haven't quite made gotten there with it yet, but I don't. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see. I just I don't know. It it would have to be the perfect storm, and and there's a storm of brewing. So I don't know. Let me get rid of this other stuff first, right? Like let me push yeah. some of this other stuff out and then see Galan, how I feel. That Kawan is go find another one, my man. Yeah, yeah, That's I know. It. That's it. I know. I and part of, part of me would be like this would like if I sell the Galant, I'm just like okay, well I guess I'm just never owning a Galant ever again realistic and, and i just have to be and i just have to be okay with that because yeah. even if i find another one it's not going to be better god no it's a one owner like believe yeah. green <laughs> yeah <laughs> stock <laughs> yeah stock example like with a good story so i it's just great story yeah. you know I, I, maybe i'll buy an evo i don't know but it won't be yeah so i just if uh, maybe i'll come to terms with it we'll see if i do sell it i'll, I'll auction it and, and and have it be no reserve and you can you can try and buy it uh, like um, i need own more galants that, I've, do already, that I've already yeah. owned in the past. Exactly. And right, you can decide like which one. Frank's, yeah, we should we Frank's should be going off the rails. Um rambling so, on. Um anyway, guys, yeah. Just honestly, thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate yes. it. 
Uh, definitely listen to our podcast anywhere you can. This is another Pointless Automotive Podcast, sure otherwise is. known as APA Podcast, if you will. Uh, T-L-D-R, too long, didn't read. Uh, right. You can check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts. Feel free to obviously leave some comments, rate the podcast. We like that. That helps it get recognized. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a shitty rating, whatever, dude. We don't care. We won't take it right. personally. It's a numbers game. Just give yeah. it to us. <laughs> yeah, it is. Load us up, baby. Bad attention is still attention, but you know, right. feel free anywhere you listen to us. Also, we do make a video version of this on YouTube. I put some cool graphics in there. Make it, make it okay. I make it you okay. You can see all of this. <laughs> yeah. All you this. Can, you can see, see the shit we're talking about in the background. And if we do, and if we do eventually do like a 49 cent, uh, Patriot, uh, Patriot, that's not what I want. Yeah. Uh, Patreon. Tom Brady, remember. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Belichick. <laughs> um, I'm a Patriots fan. I can say that. You oh. can. It's a. It's a. It's okay. Did uh, at least you won that three to nothing game the other week against the Raiders. Um, the that's a Patriots. But if we do the Patreon thing one day, maybe we can do like a an at Patreon only after dark one where we're just like scantily clad, but we just do another extra episode for Patreon members only. We'll call it behind the uh, beef pay curtain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You gotta, we have the meats edition. Um, so, so we can do that. Yeah. We can, we can. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. We can we, sell we, hot dogs. We should do that. You should have continue to listen. Business models. Um, Absolutely. And then like, obviously Guys, we, we do appreciate you taking your time to listen to us. There's a lot of there's a lot of good podcasts out there you could be listening to. There's a lot of shittier Absolutely. ones too, to be brutally honest. But we do appreciate yeah, not many. Uh, yeah, we're we're close to the bottom of that list. But Frank, how about you, man? Where can the good folks follow your personal endeavors? First off, they don't want to, but if they desperately want to see the the how the sausage is made and, and the car crash in action, um, hopefully just figuratively not literally i am mm -hmm. at uh the photographer's garage mostly on instagram occasionally on youtube um always in uh, the mean streets and generally the northern hemisphere how about you sir auto obsessive garage guys mostly on youtube you're gonna get your fix for your you know your rescues your restorations your reviews uh good shit usually pretty entertaining cars uh you know it's it's my job upon this earth to you know return them back to the population so folks can enjoy right. them and they don't go away godspeed that makes us sad, right? Like doing guys. Very sad. Um, but anyway, yeah, on mostly on YouTube, so I'm on Instagram. But as always, guys, how do we say this from the bottom of our hearts and the top of our farts? We appreciate you joining us again, and we'll see you next week. See you in hell. Let's talk about a podcast. Hail Satan. We'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. Lord Balfour <laughs>